One of the things that students find most challenging with the rate of reaction topic is all the graphs. Today's video is how we can predict how different changing conditions will impact the graphs and what they look like and how this shows the different rates of reaction. example reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid is a pretty standard example in most exam syllabuses. It produces a gas, carbon dioxide, which means that we can monitor the rate of reaction using a gas syringe. If we plot a graph of time versus volume of gas collected, we get a graph that looks a bit like this. You can see it's super steep in the beginning, which means that it's going really, really fast at the beginning. And then as the reaction goes on, it kind of flattens out until it gets flat, which means that the reaction has completed or it has stopped. So this is your characteristic rate of reaction graph. The kind of questions that you might be asked with relation to this are things like, predict what the shape of this graph would look like if this reaction was done at a higher temperature. So hopefully you know that if it's a higher temperature, that means that it's a faster rate of reaction. So the way that we show a faster rate of reaction is that we're gonna need the line to be steeper at the beginning. We also know that we're not changing the mass or the moles of any of the reactants. The calcium carbonate and the hydrochloric acid are staying the same. The temperature is the only thing that's changing. So if the calcium carbonate and the hydrochloric acid stay the same, that means that the total volume of carbon dioxide is also staying the same. So steeper, but finishes at the same point. Let's mix this up a bit. What happens if I say that I'm gonna use bigger pieces of calcium carbonate? We're gonna keep the mass of calcium carbonate the same, we're just gonna have bigger pieces of the solid itself. So in this case, this means that we have a lower surface area and lower surface area means a slower rate of reaction. So in this case, I'm gonna to have to draw the gradient of that line a little bit less steep than the original one. Is the total volume gonna change? No, because I didn't change the mass of calcium carbonate, that means that the total volume of carbon dioxide that's generated will still be identical to the original experiment. So at this point, you're probably wondering what could change the total volume of carbon dioxide produced in this reaction? And the truth is there's only one thing which is the amount or the moles of the limiting reagent. And by that, I mean the reagent that's likely to run out first in the reaction. In an exam question, they will often tell you which of the reactants is limiting or in excess. You might have to read the words at the top. It's not gonna be written on top of the reactants like I've done here. So in mine, I've said that the calcium carbonate is limiting, and this means that the HCl is therefore in excess. If I say that my first reaction, the one I did originally, was with 10 grams of calcium carbonate, the question might ask, what do you predict the shape of the graph will look like if I were to do the same reaction with five grams of calcium carbonate? Now, if I've only got five grams of it, this means that I can only possibly make half the volume of carbon dioxide that I had to start with. So I'm gonna draw the line where approximately halfway is on this graph, and then I'm gonna connect the two with our general shape of rate of reaction graphs. To be successful at these, it's really important that you do a ton of exam style questions to get used to what could happen and what could potentially be asked. It's all very manageable, you just need to practice.